what up y'all the littest teacher you never had it's mr cruz back with another video uh so today's tutorial i'm going to be running through the redrum rack which is my favorite plugin got so much love and affection for this plugin like it's unbelievable um it is the my favorite plugin that i have in reason um and it's definitely the thing that i use the most uh it's actually i didn't know this um but it's modeled after the roland tr808 i knew that but i didn't know that the tr808 came around in like the 1980s which is like almost a decade before i was born like that blows my mind that this ancient piece of equipment that was created you know decades ago is one of my favorite things in modern music making um but let's go ahead and get it cracking uh, i'm going to show you guys a couple of features some things that i like um hopefully something that you'll learn uh and maybe a little bit of tips and tricks all right let's get it cracking all right first up did you know that you can use rex files into redrum uh since rex files are just samples you can drop those into redrum so let's go into my browser let's say ba 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 uh factory sounds let's go to uh rex drums uh all right let's go to abstract hip-hop and let's take a listen here uh yeah rolling down oh dang you stopped already that's messed up i was about to about to turn up uh so let's say in this i like that hi-hat sound so i can hit this drop down and i can find that hi-hat sound right there and i can drop this in well i got my things soloed here and now I can use that hi-hat sound, you know, hit that little click, click. All right. So that's cool, right? That's dope. All right, I'm going to undo that because I like my drum that I had, my kick drum. Uh, all right. Next up, um, if you open up Redrum, uh, hopefully you know this, that you can reset it to have like, to be an empty thing. You, you can hit uh, right click and hit reset device and then it'll empty everything so if like you messed up well beyond repair you feel um you can always do that undo because i need my stuff back next um did you know that you can program your midi controller to trigger your pattern banks so over here i've got two patterns i've got this one and then i have pattern two which is the same pattern except no hi-hats All right, so what I do is you can't see it, but I got my MIDI keyboard like over there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to program at a remote override. Uh, let's do these two. And at a remote override, bam. So now you'll see that these two will change. I'm going to hit one, right? You, no change, but I'm going to hit two, and now it'll change. One, two. So this will come in handy, if, especially when I'm programming a uh, hi-hat sometimes, um, and I want to switch back and forth between certain patterns real quickly. Now, the thing about it is, is that it's affected by your resolution here. So obviously, the higher your resolution is, um, the, the way the patterns work is that if you're playing the patterns or if you're recording them in real time where you're re hitting record and then you hit one pattern and then you hit the next pattern, um, the next pattern will start playing on the next downbeat. So if your resolution is set really high, then that change is going to happen very quickly. But if it's set really low, then you'll have a little bit of time between there'll be a delay essentially between when you hit the next pattern to play and when it actually starts playing. So uh, we can do that right here. So I'm going to hit run and then I'll tell you when I hit it. One, two, three. All right. So when I said three, I hit it. And then you obviously can tell that delay between when it, actually started playing um that's because i have a high resol or a pretty low resolution at one eighth um so that's that one number three you struggling with ideas you can't come up with something you got beat block you're trying to not waste a lot of time and you really need to come up with something quick you can randomize patterns. Did you know that? All right. So with randomizing patterns you would go here uh anywhere after you have a you have so for this one because there's three different ones. There's randomized pattern, alter pattern, and alter drums. Uh, randomized pattern will do a whole bunch of crazy nonsense. So even if you have a blank pattern selected, I could hit randomized pattern, and now I have some crazy nonsense. Um, now with randomized pattern, it will change every, it, you run the risk of changing every single parameter 
in redrum. With that being said, um, it might help you to kind of come up with something, but I don't know. I, I never really used a uh, randomize uh, pattern, but I could see the application in this instance. So let's say you have a, uh, a tambourine and you like the tambourine sound, but you're struggling to come up with a pattern or a rhythm for it. Then you can put that one tambourine into redrum and start with that and then hit randomize pattern and just wait until you get something good. But that being the case, uh, if let's say you're only occupying one drum module, uh, the randomized pattern will change module two and three and four. So that means when you eventually drop something into two, three and four, they're already going to have a pattern in there. Hence why I don't really use randomized pattern, but we have alter pattern. So with alter pattern, uh, let me go back to pattern a. So notice in this one, I have one, two, three and number two. Uh, I've got one and two. Number three, I don't have anything. Number four, I've got one. So when I hit alter pattern, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take this pattern that I have here and it's gonna essentially shuffle it. Uh, it won't add anything to it. It won't take anything away. So for example, in this one, when uh, my drum module, not say my drum module, but yeah, my, my drum bank or whatever. Um, if I go down to alter pattern, Bam, you saw that it moved one. So maybe that was just like, you know, that one instance, it moved it very, um, it made a minor change. So let me hit alter pattern again. All right, so that time it didn't change anything, but it might've changed something. Oh, look here, my snare, it moved over here. Uh, so that's what alter pattern will do. Um, it'll change what's already there and it won't add anything. And again, that's only gonna affect the pattern. So it's not gonna mess with any of the parameters that you have up here. So let me hit undo because I want my stuff back. Uh, and then lastly, we've got alter drum. Uh, now with alter drum, that is only gonna alter the one module that you have. So uh, let's say I have, I think I had a tambourine over here. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna hit alter drum. Oop. Bam, and it changed my tambourine. My snare stayed the same, my kick stayed the same, my where my hi hat go? Where my hi hat go? My hi hat stayed the same. The only thing that changed is whatever I had selected. So, boom. Um, that's how you can use alter drum. So alter drum is probably the best one uh, out of all those three features that I use the most often. If I'm struggling with a pattern, um, bam, that's my go-to. So there you go. Undo because I need my stuff back. Next is copy pattern to track. Now, copy pattern to track is probably not very exciting or sexy or anything like that, but you can use it. Uh, let's say you created a pattern and you really dig it, you really like it, you go down to, uh, you click on the drum module, right click, and then you hit copy pattern to track. And now you have all those things. Um, so I don't use it like this very often. Like you guys saw how I do my hi hats. I tend to do it like that. So I'll start with my kick, uh, and then I'll copy my kick to my pattern or my, my copy my kick to track. And then I'll do my hi hats in redrum, do my hi hats in redrum. And then I'll copy my hi hats to, to the track. Then I'll do, you know, snares and so on and so forth. And that's usually how I do. I usually don't do the, the entire pattern because as you guys can kind of see down here, let me close this bank over here. Uh, as you guys can close the browser, as you guys can see down here, like I like to keep it changing and that's kind of how you should do. Uh, you should arrange your music. Like you need to have change up so that the listeners are engaged and they can anticipate something different coming along. Boom. Next one. It's kind of a trash one, but I'm gonna talk about it anyways. Uh, it's send effects. So this is the only thing about redrum that I think will eventually be phased out uh, because I don't really see a whole lot of use in application for it. So when redrum started, I not say when redrum started, but back in the day, reason the main mixer used to be this, right? The line six, uh, the line fourteen. Is it line fourteen? Let's just say the fourteen two mixer. Um. So when we had this, um, there was a feature and even back then I didn't really use it, but there was a feature that allowed you to use, um, to connect the send effects here with the send effects that you have up here, the aux effects. Um, and then, so let's say for example, if you had reverb, you would be able to turn your, the, the send effect one on 
your snare and then add reverb to it right from Redrum. Now, the reason I don't find this useful and that I kind of think it's archaic because to me it's from a mixing standpoint, it's better and it's more beneficial and versatile to be able to uh, route all of your drums to individual tracks, individual uh, mixer channels, and then mix your drums that way. Uh, and obviously I'm gonna have my send effects in my my main mixer and then I'll just use the send effects that I already have here to, you know, mix my drums. Anyways, but I'm still gonna share it with you because I'm sure you wanna know that. Next one is kind of dope. Um, and I feel stupid for saying that it's not, it's another one that I don't use very often, um, but it's called sample start. So, um, let's see. So there's some of these different modules that you see down at the bottom that they have different features and different knobs. So here we have tone and notice that some of them have velocity. Uh, this is start velocity. This is pitch velocity and so on and so forth. So what those mean, um, is that any time that you, you can obviously change the tone of an instrument, but if you turn the velocity up or down, what it will do is it will, the tone will be impacted or affected by how hard you hit your notes or how hard your notes are hitting. So for example, let's see if I can get my snare, right? So there goes my, my, I have a pretty low tone. So if I can turn it up now, let's say I want my velocity to be up. So what will happen is if I hit it low, like I get my velocity the way it is. If I hit it hard, actually wait, no, let's do it with a low one. So if I hit it softly, my, bleh. if I hit it softly, what happens is my tone will play the way it is uh, wherever I have my tone knob set. If I hit it hard, um, a higher velocity will give it a, a better, a higher tone. So that's low, this is high. It's, it, and I mean, I don't know. It'll give you a more realistic effect if you're kind of programming your drums uh, by hand and doing it because obviously you're not gonna hit it the exact same force uh, every single time. So that can kind of be helpful. Um, but I would tend to do it a little bit less so that there's not that drastic of a change. All right, um, and then we have sample, uh, sample start. So let's, all right. Sample start works the same way. So um, if I turn my velocity up and I turn my start up, so when I hit it regular, sorry, when I hit it softly, it's gonna be impacted by where the start knob already is. It's gonna play the sample from where I set my start knob. If I hit it hard, it's gonna start my sample. It should start my sample from the very beginning. So if I hit it soft, you're not getting that first transient. If I hit it hard, oh wait, no, never mind. I'm sorry. I'd have messed up. Um, I forgot that this sample is really, sh uh, it's short. And I specifically picked it because of the reverb so that we can kind of hear this. So I'm gonna do this again and I promise I'm gonna get it right. All right, so I'm hitting it. I said I was gonna get it right and I got it wrong. All right, so if I hit it softly, it's gonna play from wherever the start is. No, I'm sorry, it's gonna play from the beginning. I gotta cough. <laughs> if I hit it hard, it's gonna play from wherever the start knob is. So I'm hitting it hard there, and you can see that you're not getting a whole lot of transients. So I'm gonna turn it back a little bit. Hit it hard, hit it soft. All right, the thing about this is, if we turn it to a negative value, it'll reverse that, um, it'll reverse the relationship in that. So if I hit it hard now, you're gonna hear less transients. No, you hear more transients. Yeah, that's right, because when we hit in soft, we heard more transients. All right, so if I hit it hard, I hear more transients. If I hit it soft, you'll hear less. Well, let me turn my start knob up. Turn it up a little bit more. Up a little bit more. There we go. Hitting it soft, hitting it hard. Hitting it soft. Hitting it hard. Hitting it soft. Hitting it hard. 
So there you go, how you can kind of use that. And that's something, again, like if you're doing your drums live on pads, it'll help you to get a more realistic sound. Um, and then pitch. Now, pitch is the toughest one, but man, it's, it gives you such a cool effect. So let's first find find this. All right, so I, let's say I want to change the pitch. Now, if I set the pitch, what is going to happen is it's going to play where the pitch is at. But when I send my bend, uh, this is kind of where it gets confusing because you would think that if I send my bend to a negative amount that it's going to pitch it downwards, but it's actually going to pitch it up. So you'll take a listen here. If I can figure it out. All right. All right. See? So if I put my pitch lower, it's going to start lower. All right. Now the rate knob will change the rate at which it'll happen. So if I set my rate knob low, um, it'll happen quicker. So there'll be less time between where my pitch starts and where it's supposed to bend to. So that's almost in indistinguishable. So if I change it up, bam. All right. So now with the velocity knob, the velocity again will impact how hard you hit it will impact um, your pitch bend and it's associated with the bend, not necessarily with the rate. So, so that's me hitting it soft, hard. If I turn it to the negative value, hitting it soft and it hard. I think it is being affected by the rate. Maybe it's associated with the rate knob. I don't know. I never knew that. But you obviously like you're getting a pretty dope sound from what is a normal tambourine. Um, so there you go. Last two. All right, they're kind of hand in hand. So the first thing is gate out. Um, so I use my gate out when I'm trying to layer my drums, uh, layer my snares essentially. So I'm gonna mute this one because that's where my other snare is. Oh, let's go back up. So this is where one snare is, and then this snare is gated to this snare here. Uh, gated means that. Um, well, I'll show you in the back. So here's this snare sound, and then here's this snare sound. So the reason that I layer my snares is sometimes I like the character of a low end on one snare and I like the character on a high end of another snare. So layering them together gives me a more fuller sound. Uh, so if I turn my rack around, you see that I have my gate out routed to gate in on this one uh, on module 10. So when I hit module one, it's going to trigger. You'll see that this light over here is lighting up. It's going to trigger that other drum and they're both going to play at the same time. Uh, and actually down here under is kind of where I've got them both routed to a line six mixer um, just so I can kind of adjust the volume as I see fit. And lastly, we have a very special one, a very special feature. Uh, it's over here, channel eight and nine exclusive. So the channel eight and nine exclusive, essentially what that means is that on channels eight and nine, whenever channel eight is playing, it's going to play fine. But when channel nine is triggered or a sound comes out of channel nine, it's going to mute or silence channel eight. So this is really good when you're working with hi hats, because obviously in real life, when an open hi hat hits, that means your closed hi hat is not going to sound anymore because that hi hat has been opened and it's no longer closed. Um, so I'm going to mute these two so you can kind of hear that example, what that sounds like. And you can actually see, right? You can see from uh, the playhead where it's, or the play trigger, uh, how it's being hit. And then when this one hits, this one is inactive. And you can also kind of see it down here if you're watching my levels, how when my open hi hat uh, sounds, that my hi hat uh, levels go down. So you see that? So it happens up here too. So boom. There you go. Um, so that's a real simple, stupid, easy way to make sure that your hi hats and your open hi hats are not hitting at the same time and clouding up that frequency. Well, that's what I got for you guys today. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below if you learned anything today in today's video. Um, and let me know what that is. Also, maybe you already knew all this stuff. And if that's the case, comment below and let me know what is your favorite feature of Redrum. If you have one, if you hate Redrum, let me know. Um, definitely would love to hear. 
All right. Uh, next video will be coming out next week. I got something good for you guys. All right. Mr. Cruz, out.